Today's video is sponsored by Anthony Ralston being an absolute baller. What a performance last night from the Celtic man. His first ever start for Scotland at Hamden against Armenia. Yes, they went up to a great deal, but Ralston's performance was absolutely excellent. He got the Man of the Match award. He scored a goal and a brilliant goal at that, a brilliant header um, from quite an acute angle in the first half. He had actually a few other chances. He was flashing balls across and I think even if he hadn't scored that goal, he probably still would have been the main contender for the Man of the Match award. A brilliant level of performance from Ralston. You know, people talk about Andy Robertson's career rise. Anthony Ralston isn't far off it when you consider where he was a year ago and where he finds himself now. And probably some non-Celtic fans watching that game last night, a little bit surprised at just how good Ralston was. They clearly haven't been watching Celtic because Ralston has been that good for us whenever he played last season and he's going to be a major part of next season as well. So well done, Tony. Um, deserves all the accolades he's getting after that last night. Well done to Callum McGregor as well. Again, he just goes under the radar. Of course, I'm biased watching Scotland, but I thought... McGregor was excellent last night, just keeps things simple, very rarely gives the ball away to the extent that when he does, it's really noticeable and he had one late on in the game and you were kind of surprised it was McGregor because he takes care of the ball so well. It's funny actually when you watch McGregor playing alongside some hyped players down south and I'm talking about former Celtic players as well, the likes of Stuart Armstrong and Ryan Christie. For me, McGregor's like a level or two above these players. And even someone like John McGinn, who is very highly rated and I think he's a great player, I just think McGregor is just as good as him, if not better. And he probably just doesn't get the plaudits because he doesn't play in that world down south. So well done, Anthony Ralston. Well done, Cal McGregor. And we just wanted to start this video with a bit of positivity. Again, today we're going to give you a bit of a roundup of what's happening at Celtic. I don't think there's any transfer stuff today. We covered basically all of that yesterday and there's certainly been nothing major that's emerged in the last 24 hours. So today we've got a selection of non-transfer Celtic stories that have piqued my interest and will hopefully uh, do the same for you too. You can read more about all of these stories on 67hailhail.com. Now, be honest, did you even know that we had a website? You obviously know about the YouTube channel and you know about the other guys on the YouTube channel, but did you actually know about the website? Well, it's a brilliant website. It's actually the biggest Celtic website in terms of monthly hits and it's, uh, yeah, very good content. If you kind of like the stuff that's said on the channel, but you want maybe even more depth and you want to be able to read stuff, then that's kind of what a website does and that's certainly what the 67 Hail Hail website does. So yeah, check that out. You can read from the likes of John, David, we've got Lewis Laird on there now as well. Um, and even occasionally I'm on there as well. So lots happening and I can officially tick off my yearly mention for the website, and we can move on to Celtic news. Now, does anyone fancy a full stadium TIFO? Well, if your answer to that is no, don't worry about it. If the answer is yes, then don't worry again, you won't have long to wait at all. On the weekend of Saturday, July the 30th, and Sunday, July the 31st, Celtic will begin their new Premiership campaign with what's known as Flag Day. And we're looking forward to it even more now because when the team walk out, they will be greeted by a full stadium card display, a.k.a. a TIFO. Yesterday, the Green Brigade released this message via the North Curve Celtic Twitter page. On the opening day of the season, we will produce a TIFO to celebrate the success of last season while laying a marker for the season ahead. We don't stop. Ange has united our entire club, so we will prepare a TIFO that will involve the entire stadium. To achieve this, we need your support. We won't stop at one TIFO. We will keep the fund running to support all TIFO initiatives throughout the season. This will include bigger, better, see what they did there, more regular TIFOs, as well as at least two full stadium TIFOs for the season. 
At the time of me recording this, the GoFundMe is sitting at over 11,000 of the £20,000 target, so I will link that below uh, in case you want to donate um, to more wonderful displays around Celtic Park. I love this one against Bodo Glimt, the home tie. Of course, it's uh, undoubtedly my favourite, I think just for the simplicity. The flares before the Rangers night game on February the 2nd were immense too. And it's just a reminder of the kind of support the team were missing the season before last, the, the COVID hit season when fans couldn't get into the game. In terms of full stadium displays, I was racking my brains and... I can only remember three, certainly from recent Celtic times. I don't know if Tifos were a big thing uh, in the 20th century, for example. Um, two of them were against Barca. The great one in 2012 there, run by the fans. What a night that was. I maintain that that full stadium display set the tone for the night. And of course, in case you didn't know, spoiler, we beat the great Barcelona team, Messi, Xavi, Iniesta... Um, Pique, Mascherano, etc. Don't know why I've thrown Mascherano in there, but it was a great night. Not so great the following season when Barcelona were again the visitors and again a full stadium display, greeted the teams as they walked out. The difference was that this one was arranged by the club and it was just nowhere near as good. It was honestly everything about that night was like so much worse than the previous year and we only lost 1-0 to Barca and it was a pretty late goal a header from Fabregas and we actually had a brilliant James Forrest and a brilliant Charlie Mulgrew chance just before that we could easily have beaten Barca two years in a row but that night was just nowhere near as good um, probably a bit unfair given what had happened the previous year but that Tifo didn't do as well and finally the only other one I can remember Invincible Trophy Day against Hearts in 2017, which sadly I don't have any photos for, for some reason, but that was a special day as well. That was a Lisbon Lions full stadium display from memory. You'll be able to get that um, if you just search for it online. There may have been another full stadium display at, at some stage that I'm forgetting, but I'm usually quite good with these things. Of course, there have been numerous other brilliant TIFOs over the years. We will now take... A little look at some of the best from the last, what, decade or so, with some very ominous music playing for no reason at all. So again, that was just the images that we had. Is there a favourite there? A, a kind of common favourite that people love? I, I guess the game usually um, kind of determines how you look back at these things, although I do love the, the Bodo Glimt one from last season, despite the fact that we got absolutely horsed for 90 minutes after it was raised. Um, let us know below and, and let us know how much you're, you're looking forward to seeing this next season. I think it's going to be the perfect start to the season, flag day, I know it's the best part of two months away, but I can already be excited about it, and so can you, seeing Celtic Park full, just having one last wee look back at last season, and more so looking ahead to what's to come, and Andrew will certainly already be doing that. Um, by the way, next season's fixtures are out a week on Friday, that is the league there. I'm predicting that the visitors on Flag Day will be Ross County. 
and I'm basing that on absolutely nothing, but we'll see if I'm right in, well, eight days or so. We'll obviously cover that on the channel as well. Now, some interesting comments from Matt O'Reilly, who is currently out playing with the Denmark under-21s at the moment. He played 62 minutes for them against Kazakhstan last Saturday. That was his first start for them. Again, like Ralston, he'd played one game off the bench prior to that. But it's what's been happening on the training pitch that has seemed to mean the most to O'Reilly, and he's been speaking about it. Now, basically what happens is, it's quite a good idea, actually, Denmark occasionally mix the training between the full team and the 21s. So rather than just having two separate trainings, sometimes they'll mix the teams, I guess, because the 21s could go on to be uh, full team players, or that's um, at least the, the kind of plan for that. And it turns out that Matt O'Reilly got on quite well with one of the senior players, Barcelona's Martin Brathwaite. Now, O'Reilly told Danish outlet Bold... I actually talked to Brathwaite quite a lot on the last day. It wasn't like I went up to him and said, can I talk to you? But it just came naturally that we got talking. Before that, I hadn't really talked to him that much. Then we were the last two in the dressing room and he came over and told me a lot. So we actually had a really good chat. We talked a lot about the mental side of football. He talked a lot about how he had become successful, about eating right, working hard and being professional. So that was cool to hear about. It wasn't something I was thinking too much about at the time, but afterwards it was a bit funny that I had spent 20 minutes talking to Brathwaite from Barcelona. I'm just from Glasgow, so he probably doesn't know me that well, but that's football for you. I love the fact that Matt O'Reilly is now going about saying he's from Glasgow. Now, I know he's only lived here a few months, but that is the kind of commitment that we need. And if he's worried about Brathwaite not knowing who Matt O'Reilly is, I wouldn't be too concerned about that because I think in years to come, he's going to have a fair idea of the name Matt O'Reilly. It's pretty mad to me anyway that O'Reilly's playing under 21's football, that seems pretty unfair. I guess that's just a example of how much talent Denmark have in their ranks and their senior team is obviously littered with world-class players. I certainly think that O'Reilly will go on to be a senior Danish player. But can you imagine if he was Scottish or eligible for Scotland, for example, he would be very much in the full squad and I think he'd probably actually be in the cusp of, of maybe getting into our best starting eleven. So I guess it just shows the work he's got ahead of him at Denmark. Next up, by the way, for O'Reilly and Denmark's 21s are Scotland. Tomorrow, Stephen Welsh could, of course, play against them there. And I think that's on BBC Alba. I want to see on one of those channels, maybe the BBC Scotland channel, uh, tomorrow evening. So that could be one to watch. Now, speaking of tomorrow... It is a big day, June the 10th. What were you doing on June the 10th last year? Have a good think about that. The wee clue is that it was the day when everything changed for Celtic and a wonderful man came into our lives officially. To mark the anniversary, sorry about that, we are going to do a bit of a special video tomorrow. Um, looking forward to doing that. Just a wee break from the kind of daily grind of uh, news updates in Celtic. Of course, if anything major does develop, we will change that up. But yeah, look forward to that tomorrow. Speak to you then.